Welcome to this week's edition of Helpful Football Preview, along with head coach Dave Cicchini. This is Todd Eichel, and uh, we'll start, of course, by taking a look back at, at uh, Saturday's game at Dayton. Uh, we ran into a very, very, very polished, good, experienced football team, and obviously you guys didn't quit. You had the late touchdowns in the mm -hmm. fourth quarter, but uh, obviously, as always, disappointing with a loss. Sure, yeah, and, and it starts with the turnovers. You know, we did a great job driving the football, uh, a lot of positives on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, starting with uh, kind of a reinvigorated rushing attack, uh, uh, which was uh, outstanding, uh, especially when uh, we went in the game without Jarrett Morgan, our starting tailback, and, and to have three freshman tailbacks uh, carry the load for us, and, and uh, which was uh, uh, great to see those guys step up. Uh, so we did a really nice job moving the football, and, and uh, but when you throw three interceptions, uh, two of them on tipped passes. There, there's a, are, those are tough obstacles to overcome when you play a team as talented as Dayton. Dave, the, the quarterback position, everybody talks about this, maybe the most important position in sports. And, and what I think the PFL has kind of is, is moved into, evolved into, is where the teams with the dominant quarterbacks have become the best teams. Right. Um, years ago, in the early days of the PFL, Dayton and Drake won by playing great defense and running the football. Mm -hmm. It's not like that anymore. No. And we saw a great quarterback on Saturday. Yeah, and we've seen a couple uh, so far this season, and, and, and that really is true. And just the way that uh, offenses have evolved over the past four or five years, it really has uh, become uh, the importance of having that quarterback, whether he is a great drop-back passer like you may see at uh, Moorhead State or whether uh, you get a guy like a Dayton who can hurt you with his feet as well, uh, those types of individuals really have become the centerpieces of most of the offenses. Uh, and obviously Jimmy Seawald wasn't able to complete the game, mm -hmm. uh, but you do have a true freshman quarterback who is showing signs that he could be an elite quarterback in years to come. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Like I said, he was 7 for 11 uh, before he got hurt, and, and uh, uh, really, like I said, two of the, the three interceptions that occurred, uh, two, two Jimmy threw one, Ryan did, but uh, you know, two balls that were tipped and, and not necessarily their fault. But uh, yeah, Jimmy was uh, playing a great game. Uh, really had a command of the offense. Uh, you know, we were uh, changing up our tempo a little bit, which is something we don't do a whole lot of. And and uh, the the team responded to that. And and uh, so I think he's got a very bright future for us. Uh, it was surprising, I think, to most that. Well, not that Jarrett Morgan didn't play because we knew because of the concussion there was a good chance he wouldn't play, but that Austin Petrie ended up leading your yes. team in rushing, a guy yeah. who hadn't run the ball all year. How do you yeah. explain that? Yeah, well, like I said, he uh, uh, is a guy who had been coming on more and more, and, and he was a little dinged up at the end of camp, so he was our third freshman tailback on, on the roster. So uh, he was down on scout team, and he was doing a great job when, once he got healthy. Uh, and as most freshmen, you know, the first – uh, exposure he got to the game was in special teams. Did a great job running down on kickoff coverage and making some tackles. And so he was getting more comfortable with the offense. He was healthier. Uh, we were getting more confident in terms of putting him into the game so that uh, when it came to this past week with Jarrett being down, we said, well, here's a guy who's probably going to take some snaps for us. Um, I didn't think he would get as many sure. carries as he did, but again, that's part of a function of both the effectiveness and, and the success that the, we were having up front with our offensive line uh, in terms of getting on blocks and, and doing a good job of holding the line of scrimmage. Uh, but he, when he had the ball in his hand, he was productive. We had a lot of efficient runs, and, and he fell forward. He, he uh, uh, brought uh, a great physicality to his running style, and, and, and that uh, really added something to the game. So as the game progressed, uh, he took more and more snaps for us. Overall, was this the best the offensive line has maybe played in a single game all year? I think so. I I really do. When you consider the quality opponent, um, the uh, you know, like I, I pointed out, I think uh, last week uh, when, when we talked, just the fact that of their front seven, uh, so many of those guys are redshirt seniors or seniors, and and those types of older, more mature, physically dominant type uh, defensive lines. Uh, had given us trouble in weeks past. Um, I think, you know, really San Diego would be a, an excellent example, but to be able to go out there uh, and, and play the way that they did, not only in the run game, but they did a great job in pass protection as well, I would say it's been their best game so far. As you look ahead, uh, Jacksonville is not the dominant program they were two or three years ago. They're still a solid football team, and they present a great challenge on Saturday. Yeah, and it's a different Jacksonville program. You know, they're, they, they had some 
some issues last year. They they let go their their head coach, so they're working with a, a new coach, a completely different offensive scheme, switching to the triple option and and doing things that way has been a big change. And I know they've had their growing pains that way. Uh, different defensive scheme changed up. They're all radically different. Uh, they did lose some players through uh, just the natural attrition process of of changing things and changing a, a you know a culture. Uh, and and that's just part of you know that process when when you make such radical changes from one staff to the next. So they're still very talented. Uh, they've got some uh, incredibly talented players, skill players. They're athletic. They can run. Uh, they do play physical. They play fast. Um, you know they've been hurt by the big play on defense, and that's something that that uh, I know that they're trying to to change uh, going into our game. Uh, and, and offense, they offensively they've been hot and cold. They put up uh, over 60 points against Moorhead State. So when they are on, they are really really tough to stop. Um, but again, when you when you run that type of triple option type of offense, it's it does take a long time to truly master. I think. Uh, uh, these guys are, are going to be an elite offense uh, at some point here in another year, perhaps. But uh, right now, they've just shown just uh, a little bit of inconsistency that, that, again, I think you've seen out of our offense at time with, with such so many young players that we've played over the last couple of years. Yeah, as we mentioned, Jarrett Morgan didn't play last week. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Sewell got knocked out of the game. Mm -hmm. He ended up playing, again, a lot of young kids, right. a lot of new kids. Where do things stand going into this week? Who, yeah. Who's in, who's out? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and it's still, you know, it's early to tell with the concussions. Uh, we're very hopeful to, to get uh, both of them back, both Jimmy and Jarrett back. You know, on the defensive side of the ball, Christian Campbell was uh, didn't play in the game because of a concussion. So uh, we've kind of had this late season rash of, of where guys have gone down. Um, we feel like you know, hopefully all three of them will be back, but but they still aren't far enough along in that protocol to say yeah, they're definitely in. They've got to you know can maintain. Uh, being symptom free uh, for X amount of days, and, and so we're in the middle of that process right now. Uh, it is our last game of the season, so I know that our players, you know, there's no saving it for next week or resting guys and say, well, next week we'll get them at 100%. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to get as many guys as possible suited up and, and helping us get a victory here at home. Good luck on Saturday. Thanks. For the head coach, Dave Cicchini, this is Todd Eichow. Thanks for joining us on Valpo Football Preview.